Hello everyone. Today I want to encourage you to think about some warmer days ahead. Maybe a little bit warmer than today. Think about maybe a nice warm summer day where you get to drink that cool, crisp glass of lemonade. Today I want to challenge you to think about what it would take to set up a lemonade stand. Now, you're not being asked to actually create a lemonade stand. You don't have to go out and buy any materials to make lemonade, but over the next couple days, we're gonna add a few pieces onto this assignment so that once we've worked through a couple different pieces, at the end, you would have a plan for creating your own lemonade stand. So again, you don't have to make any lemonade, you don't have to make a lemonade stand, but we're going to go through some steps to use our brains, to use some mathematical skills so that we can imagine what it would be like. So I'm gonna give you the first piece to consider today. What's really important if you were to create a lemonade stand is that you know what recipe you're going to use for lemonade. And you need to know the recipe because you need to know what ingredients you would buy. So a first part for you to think about is to think about your lemonade recipe. Now you might even use the internet to do a little bit of research. You might bring up a search engine and type in what I like to do. I think I'm really smart about it when I want to make something. I always type in the best blank. So you might type in the best lemonade recipe, or maybe you already know a recipe or know how to make lemonade. The first thing we need to know is what's our recipe going to be because we need to know what ingredients to buy. So research lemonade recipe you want to write down your recipe and the ingredients you'll need Now already within this first step, you'll be making a connection to math because our ingredients are going to be listed in amounts. So you'll have units of measurement to think about, maybe cups or teaspoons or tablespoons in order to make your lemonade recipe. Now a second part of this first stage is once you have uh, written down your recipe, you want to find out how much your ingredients cost. And the good news is you don't have to go anywhere to figure that out. You can check out a link below this video for Walmart. You could go there and search to see how much your ingredients cost, or you could use another store's website. Just search and find out the cost of your ingredients. Now what I might do in order to keep things organized is I might write down my recipe, I need this and this and this, and maybe it's measured in cups or in teaspoons, whatever the unit of measurement might be. And then what I might do is after I have searched, I might record the price that I find right next to it for those ingredients that are involved. So you could submit your recipe, the cost of the ingredients, to Mrs. Thomas or I. You'll find the emails listed below here. Maybe you'll be creative and you'll take a picture of your work. Maybe you'll make some sort of a video. Uh, but for now, one of the ways you can submit your work and share that with us is through 
email. So, hope you have fun thinking about this first step, and I'll see you soon.